Amen. I said it is not thus said the Lord. I said it is not thus said the Lord. I say it is me speaking. I noticed something. Amen. All this Bible that we read and we say God to say in the book of Acts, in the book of Romans, in the book of Colossians and Galatians and Corinthians and all, it was Apostle Paul that spoke. But we say it is the word of God. Am I correct? Simply because the Bible says all scripture is written by the inspiration. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 where Apostle Paul said, Now this is I, not the Lord. And yet it has become scripture. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And remember we have an assurance. He said he will not let the word of his servant fall to the ground. Now I want to confirm it today. I say that today, what we are going to do today, it was not to said the Lord. I said this is me now saying it. Amen. So God will confirm whether I am his servant or not. Through your testimonies. Through your testimonies. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have told God that he should confirm, confirm that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Okay. There was this testimony we had from uh, a Reverend uh, uh, Shambak, who was a disciple or a minister working with A.A. A. Allen. They are the contemporaries of William Abraham in those revival time of mighty healings and deliverances that took place in the turn of the 19th century. So Shambak is very old now, but he was given a testimony. And we are going to also act on that same testimony for that is the purpose of testimonies. is to lift up somebody's faith to say, if he did it for him, if I come by the same faith also, he should do it for me. If not, he is partial. That is why he said, I am the Lord, I change it not. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that was the most uh, favorite scripture of William Abraham. Each time it was time to demonstrate the power. He would say, he did it like this. If the same one is here, now will he do it? That is the purpose of testimony. That's why they are written in the scriptures for us. To have a bearing of our faith. So today, it's not long grammar. Because as we shall see from the testimony, that woman did not do any long prayer. It was just one action she did. Finish. So if you can sit down quietly and watch the screen and listen to Shambag, Reverend Shambag. I had young Carlos who's been driving me around, brought me from the airport. He said, Brother Shambach, what's the greatest miracle you ever saw? I said, do you got three hours? <laughs> and I gave him the short version of it. And this is when I be believe that God opened the veil and allowed me to look into the future. We were in Birmingham, Alabama when I was with Brother Allen. And a woman brought a little boy in four years of age who was born with 26 diseases. He had no male organs on his body. He was born blind and deaf and dumb. His tongue hanged out of his mouth and lay on his chin. Both arms and legs were twisted together and matted together. The elbows penetrated into his little tummy. His knees touched the elbows and he had no feet. Clubs, you don't put shoes on clubs, you put shoes on feet. And they mother brought that child in. I wrote the card out. I gave it to her in the afternoon service. I was preaching faith, and she was there all week long. But the card was never called. Sometimes we get in too big of a hurry. We run into church, quick preacher, lay hands on me. Bible says lay, suddenly, lay hands suddenly on no man. 
Some people need to sit down and hear the word of God preached. And they need to get those preconceived opinions and them doctrines of devils that they have in their in their brain and they need to hear the unadulterated word of God that God's not dead but he's alive and he's the same today as he was yesterday. That woman sat there with that boy three services a day. She came from another city like you did. following Sunday she came after I preached in the afternoon she said brother Shambach I run out of money have you ever been there and she said my boy hadn't been prayed for yet I said I refuse to apologize for the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost used brother Allen in a different way and every night he would minister but it was in a different vein and he didn't call the prayer cards but she said I've been staying in the hotel I've been eating in restaurants I've been giving in the offering three times a day and I'm down to my last $20. I've got to go home tonight. Can you do something? I said, I can do one thing. If he don't call that prayer card tonight, I'll take that boy over to his trailer house and make him lay hands on that baby. I'll get him to the man of God. And I meant that. I would have done it. I, I was leading the singing that night. And introduced Brother Allen, and he popped out on the stage. And he said, we're going to receive an offering tonight, quickly. It's going to be an offering of faith. Don't get nervous. I'm not going to take another one. <laughs> but I might. And when he said, I want you to give an offering of faith... A puzzled look came on the faces of everybody, including me. I never heard him use that terminology before. And he said, now, if you don't know what I mean by an offering of faith, he said, I want you to give God something you can't afford to give. Because if you can afford it, there's no faith attached to it. It's logical. Never heard that expression. The first thing I saw was that little woman. Had the baby in her hand, tossed in another woman's arms, and she come running. She was three-fourths of the way back, and she beat everybody down there. He was holding the buckets. And I saw that woman come running fast. I mean ran. 3,000 people in that auditorium. And she threw something in the bucket. I'm on the platform. I'm nosy now. I jumped off that platform. <laughs> and I looked in that bucket. Because that woman told me all she had was that $20 bill. And when I looked in that bucket, you know what I saw in that bucket? $20. She's in Birmingham, Alabama, and she lives in Knoxville, Tennessee. But she wanted a miracle. She needed something from God. She said, Lord, I'll walk home if you just heal my baby. When I saw that $20 bill, I ran behind the platform and I cried like a baby. I said, oh God, I've been trying to teach that woman faith all week. But I said, oh God, give me faith like that woman's God. I don't know whether I could do that. You don't know whether you can do it unless you're in a similar situation. That man of God received the offering, started preaching. He wasn't 15 minutes into that service when all of a sudden he said, he said, I'm, I see a big building. I said, oh, Lord, here we go on another trip. <laughs> this is how God used me. He said, it's a big old white building. I'm sitting there unmoved because I hear it all the time. He said, I'm inside the building now. And he said, I, oh, there's no doubt where I am. He said, I hear all them babies crying. It's the maternity ward in this hospital. He said, a little baby was born. He said, I see 12 doctors around him. He said, that little baby was born with 12, 14, 21, 20, 26 major diseases. And when he said that, I sat up and I said, my God, tonight's that baby's night. Tonight's that baby's night. He said, the doctor said the baby wouldn't live to see its first birthday. But he said, the doctor's wrong. 
He said, that baby's approaching four. He said, I see mother stuffing a suitcase. She's going on a trip. Another lady's with her. Put the baby in a bassinet. It's in the back seat of an old Ford. He said, I see the Tennessee-Alabama border. He said, that car's pulling in on the parking lot. He said, lady, you're here tonight. Bring me your baby now. God's going to give you 26 miracles. Now. Ooh. Not tomorrow, Benny. Now. God's going to give you 26 miracles. That little woman brought that baby. Four years of age, put it in the man of God's hands, and he started to walk back and forth on that platform. I leaped from my seat and walked with him. 3,000 people stood to their feet. He said, I want everybody to close your eyes and pray with me. I said, not me, mister. I'm going to watch this one. I've been waiting all week for this. And don't you all look so sanctified. You're just like I am. You want to see something too? <laughs> and I'm standing there right next to him. And the first thing I saw was that tongue laying on the chin, snap like a rubber band. <laughs> And it went in his mouth for the first time in four years. Those little blind eyes, you didn't know whether they were blue or brown or what color they were because it was nothing but milky, solid milk. You knew the boy was blind, couldn't see. But I saw two whirlpools in those eyes. And all of a sudden, you could see brand new blue eyes coming through the milky colored condition. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about a God that's not dead, but a God that's alive. Thank God for his anointing. The next thing I saw was those arms and legs began to snap simultaneously as they kicked out for the first time. Standing there in front of those people, there's no shoes on clubs. Those clubs were there. But I saw God create feet on that little boy's legs. I, saw, I used to buy my children, we used to buy them silly putty when they were kids. I don't know whether they have that now or not, but they used to make things out of that stuff. And it just looked like God was using silly putty to put a foot on the end of that boy's body. People's hands were raised. Some were fall, falling under the power. Some that didn't go down fell down. I mean, you were, we knew we were in the presence of an awesome God. Faith had nothing to do with this. This was God working in the midst of his people. This was a sovereign act of God. Mama standing over here on this side of the platform with her hands raised, tears streaming down her face. He put the child down. This boy never saw his mama, never spoke, never walked, never talked. And when he put that boy down, he took his first little steps. And when he saw mama, he ran after her. I'm running after him. He leaped into his mama's arms, wrapped his arms around her, and I heard him say his first words, Mama, 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 Mama. Twelve wheelchairs, you in wheelchairs, listen to me. You that are watching by television, I want you to hear it. Twelve wheelchairs on this side of the platform. Like a sergeant commanded all twelve of them to stand at attention, all twelve stood up at one time. And they walked out of those wheelchairs. Some spinal cords were broken, severed because of motorcycle accidents. 3,000 people watching what was taking place. And all of a sudden, like a maestro leading a great chorus, every eye went to the stretcher case. 13, 14 stretchers on this side, like they knew what was going to happen. Everybody in those wheelchairs got up and walked out totally healed. And while we're standing on the platform, people began to file down the aisle.
Put your hands together for God Almighty. I, I don't know how many people catch this testimony. The aspect we pick out there, he said they should bring an offering of faith. He said they didn't understand what the offering of faith what it meant. And he said give God something you can't afford to give. I'm breaking it down for you, somebody to understand. He said that is the offering of faith. And that was to ignite a miracle. Study this God and know how to walk with him. One of the ways to study is to hear testimonies. Hear testimonies. Eh? Francis A.K., okay. you, are, you, are, you are saying something. Just this Tuesday, Brother I.K. is here now. Where is I.K.? I.K. Okafo. Yes. His business collapsed. Then he, I see him praying. You keep praying. Finally, last year, we went to camp. Nkiru gave a revelation that I should go and anoint his shop. I got to his shop. I was physically kneeling down crying because there was nothing in that big shop. Completely drained. We continue prayers. Continue and continue on. So, this last Tuesday, he said, it is important the group hear the story about the transformation about his shop. shop. God came to him directly and asked him, I can, you want me to change your condition, help you? What is your offering like? What are you giving me? I can say, I sometimes hundred naira, sometimes he said, is that your best? I can say, I'm trying. I say, God said, is that your best? Then after a long while, God now asked him, what is the highest denomination of your country? He said, 1,000. God said, give me your best. He obeyed and changed his offering in that condition. In that condition, miserable condition. He changed his offering and that was the end of the whole crisis. Amen. The business turned around. And I went there this year and I was smiling and laughing. Amen. The whole thing was changed. Hallelujah. God bless you. Clap your hands for Jesus. That is one, another testimony after Shambach's testimony. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Every time God wants to do something, unusual. He will also cause the person he wants to do it for to do also something unusual. It is a principle that ignites miracles. Some of you have gone dry fasting. Mountain to mountain for situation to change. Some of us there's no church we have heard of we didn't go. Some don't even sleep at night for situation to change. Yes, God answers prayers. But sometimes, it may just take one simple action that may change your situation for good. I believe it. He said, you should bring something that you cannot afford to give. Give God something you cannot afford. That is, you need it too badly. If you give it, it, there will be a lot of inconvenience around you. This woman had only $20 left. How will she eat? How will she even go back to where she came from? Transport money. But she decided 
that twenty dollars is twenty dollars is an amount that she cannot afford to give because she needs it. That's the kind of offering we're talking about. It will be between you and God. It is called the offering of faith. For something you are believing God for. After I had the testimony of that woman, I remember other testimonies we have had in this church. For the first time after I had the testimony of that woman that we just listened to, Psalm 126 verse 6 became meaningful to me. That was the first time I understood that scripture very well. Can we read it? Psalm 126 and verse 6. This is the way it goes. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheep with him. You are going forth with precious seed, but weeping. You are weeping because it's all I have. This is all I have. But that seed is a precious seed. Although it is going with a cry. You are going to give an offering, but you are crying. Because this is all I have. And that took me to the story of Abraham. The only son he had, the only son that Sarah had, God said, take it and go and give it to me a burnt offering. Burnt offering, that is kill him, pull fire, like they do good. And it was as a three days journey. It's not just go to your backyard and do it. He gave him enough time for devil to tell him, see, now the only seed you get, oh, now the only thing where you gave me that, oh, now you are finished, oh, the only son, no, oh, where is the promise that God gave you? You sure say that God, they talk, so you sure, so you sure, so. Praise God. Hallelujah. I love a statement that God made after that. Let's re re read it. I think it's Genesis chapter. Um, is it chapter 8? No, sorry. Chapter 22. Okay, verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his... Amen. Let me... Uh, okay, from verse 10. Verse 9 says, And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, tired with rope, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Praise the Lord. Verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And at the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Because you have done this. Because that woman obeyed the servant of God and brought her $20. The testimony went for that. People started sowing money, sowing money at the end of that service on that woman. She went home with $230 something dollars. Because you have obeyed, God swore to bless Abraham. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Somebody today, if you have never experienced it before, from today, you will also have your own testimony. Praise the Lord. It must not be money. It can be anything. He said, give God something you can't afford to give because you need it. You need it. And that woman received the type of testimony that lets us know that God is a creator. He can change your destiny overnight. He takes a beggar and he can make him a king. From prison, he made somebody a prime minister. Hallelujah. Because he stood with God. Somebody here today, you will stand with God. And you will see him in action in the name of Jesus Christ. A brother told me that he prepares for his Thanksgiving from January. He said he keeps a particular amount. Saves a particular amount. What did I say? Weekly or so. Either weekly or monthly, he says he saves it. And then when it is time for our annual Thanksgiving, he comes and brings everything and gives the Lord. He prepares for it. You know that as a church, we have a time for annual Thanksgiving. You should prepare. It's not that day you come and say, hey, what thing I go bring for today's Thanksgiving? Hey, hey. Then they are telling you, hurry up, Namoku, you go say, hey, what thing I go bring? Go. I bet now find me 2,000 naira. You don't understand it at all. That's why your testimonies don't change. You go near this brother I am talking about. Every day is full of testimonies, testimonies, testimonies. Every time, every time is full of testimonies all around him. And when it's time for Thanksgiving, we see what he brings. So I want to make sure you understand. And I'm using you to challenge my own calling. Oh, yes. It's the most exciting period when I can stand and challenge God, challenge my calling. I don't do that always. But I do it when it is necessary. I have done it over a dead body and he came back to life. I have challenged my calling in several times. Several times, several situations. I just don't do it. People's lives must change. That's what I tell God. What's the evidence he has called me? If people's lives don't change. They're laughing at us that we have decided to follow God the rough way. What have we got to show? And those who don't know what we know, see the way they are prospering. People are laughing at us. I have told God that testimony must change. In this ministry, there will be billionaires. I'm a spiritual man. That a billionaire comes here and worships with us. It is the spirit of raising billionaire that is entering this church. Oh, that is what I claim. He has brought in the anointing for billionaires here. There are ministers all around the world that connect to this ministry. And immediately, they come, they go back to their churches. They soon discover that the same anointing that is flowing here begins to flow in their ministries. So, if a billionaire enter here also, we must tap the anointing to become billionaires. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's what I've been telling the Lord. We will raise multi-millionaires in our midst. I believe in prosperity. I believe in it. We cannot go to heaven hungry. We will eat here. But not to the detriment of our soul. Praise the Lord. 